going to help people because I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. You know, I mean, the guy is only human for Christ's sake. Boy, he's been raked over the coals uh, based on that performance uh, last Sunday. And, uh, but he is good enough and uh, we love him, don't we, Rod? We do love him, despite the fact that he has now shown himself to be human. And we have discussed just how spoiled we have been with the successes of our own Russell Wilson, okay? The miracle finish against the Vikings, okay? Let's, let's start with that in terms of just a little cliff note of what Russell Wilson has been capable of this season. And, and in so many respects, that's why he was the front runner in terms of the MVP conversation. But uh, that conversation is out the window. I could care less about the MVP. What I would like to see is Russell Wilson become Russell Wilson once again. I don't know if he's distracted by he and Sierra's new fragrance that they're trying to market, Jeff Young. I mean, um, let me tell you something. Uh, it smells to me like if they're the eighth seed in the playoff, I don't know what that fragrance is called, but I I'm going to call it stinky disappointment, all right? <laughs> I'm serious, man. The new fragrance smells like defeat, but in the end, Come on, man. You still lose. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's got too much stuff going, man, with the uh, with the new fragrance now and uh, the new baby. Don't let and, Russ cuss Bachelor. All that, that, man. Come on. He's so busy. I know. And you know what? Uh, after burning down the kitchen uh, two weeks ago, uh, Maybe it's time to not let Russ cook so much. Maybe we need to let him simmer. <laughs> Come on, man. I, I'd be willing to uh, I'd be willing to just put him on warm. Well, Let's put know. Russell Wilson on warm right now. And uh, encouraging news, by the way, the possibility that both Carlos Hyde and Chris Carson could be activated and available for the Cardinal game. Yeah, we still don't know as of this show. Uh, but, man, in a nutshell, that has killed us not having – Carson running that ball, uh, you know, Pete chickened out, gutless call not to go for it on fourth and inches, crucial play. And with Carson back there, that's a no brainer. Um, and so we've got to get that run game back right now because P uh, other teams, specifically what the Rams did to us, no respect for the running game. So they can just load up on the pass rush. Come on, and, man. Boy, they made, they made life miserable for us, man. Big time miserable for a lot of different blitz packages this quarterback has seen coming at him the last three games, Jeff Young. And big yeah. time blitz packages. That's because they know we're basically one dimensional. Okay? Well, we are. And um, well, you know what? We were a little bit more than one dimensional, but we were certainly one dimensional in that game against the Rams. Uh, the most utterly baffling statistic out of that game is DK Metcalf only getting two catches uh, and Russ seemingly ignoring him the whole game. Yeah. You know, a lot of a lot of people weighing in on social media. I know you've seen a lot of people thought Russ was playing with a concussion because he certainly, man, he just didn't look like he was making sharp decisions. That delay of game call, which was another crucial mistake. He just seemed really distracted, and he has seemed distracted for a while. Yeah. You know, it makes me wonder if his wife plays Future's music around the house when he's at practice or something. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You know what? I think, all will be, I think all will be solved by getting that running game back. I mean, we've suffered without the running game, and that's obvious, dropping three out of the last four. But you know what? There's no uh, lack of optimism or uh, positivity uh, with Pete Carroll or Russ or the rest of this team. They're still six and three. Um, we got a lot of season left. So A lot of season left, and, and I will say – and, and I think you will agree that uh, this Thursday night game is a must win. Oh, my God. Is it ever? And I'm glad. Okay, it really is. I don't want to say the sky is falling because we will be in the playoffs. But what we don't want to end up doing is having to be in some serious, ugly road games as we try to chip our way towards the Super Bowl. Right. Okay. Which might, at this point, have to go through Green Bay, where we both know in uh, January is barbecue weather. Whoops. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, the sky yeah. is falling. It's going to be falling up here tomorrow, uh, Thursday night. Uh, probably raining and cold, but uh, yeah. here's all everybody's just got to realize. Russell Wilson has never lost three games in a row since he joined the Seahawks, and he's not going to start Thursday. I expect them to come out and pedal to the metal, 
and a sense of urgency. Come on, man. Hopefully that running game's back. Um, the defense going to get a little better each time. Let's talk about as bad as Russ was. You know, that defense held the Rams to only six points in the second half, which was probably yeah. the best performance against a high-powered team all season. And, uh, you know, uh, we had some defensive players that uh, stepped up and played real well. How about Puna Ford? I think Puna got in there a couple times for sacks and disrupting that uh, whole front line, uh, hustling after the ball. Good to see that. And DK Reed, he's turning in to be a real gem, man. He had that uh, – Jamal had that strip sack, which was a beautiful little play. Um, and DJ picked that thing up. Unfortunately, Russ turned right around and uh, – Gave it right back to him. Gave it right back, and we'll, we'll show that later under the boneheaded play of the week. Wow, was that painful, man. But, you know, let's talk about what the beast, Jamal Adams, the head of the Adams family, my God, he said it uh, right there in the press conference. Here it is right here. It's, uh, it's pretty hard, I, I will say. Uh, I was out there with one arm, uh, you know, pretty much the whole game. Um, but, you know, I'm a warrior, man. <laughs> whatever it takes basically played with one arm still got a yeah. sack a couple knockdowns couple hurries that guy is an animal and uh he's just getting warmed up uh yeah i don't think that's well, he's the spark good. plug we both know that he's the spark plug on that defense totally. we're still missing some pieces on the back end of that defense and we're, and what we're gonna i be like without him. we're gonna be without him again thursday night no shaquille uh Quentin Dunbar, not going to happen. You know, uh, what's really kind of scary is seeing Tyler Lockett come up as questionable. He's got a bum knee. Yeah, I saw that. That's not going to be good. You know, here's something that uh, I, I saw uh, that just jumped right at me. Seattle Seahawks lead the NFL in injuries. 29 players injured during the course of this season. San wow. Francisco second with 28. But, boy, the wow. fact that we're still 6-3 and three with that many injuries – that's a sign of optimism right there. Well, that's something to be positive about. It would be nice to go seven and three, uh, get ourselves back in the conversation. Oh, We're yeah. out of the top 10 in the NFL power rankings right now. We have quickly fallen from grace. Yeah. Like I said, MVP talk out the window. I don't care, man. I, what I want to do is I want to see number three lead this team to some wins, as we both know he can do. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. So let's get back to playing Seahawks football Thursday night. Uh, we know we're going to have the elements. Hopefully that's in our favor. Yeah. Since they play in a toaster, in a climate-conditioned toaster when they're home. Right. And we got to get right. a running game. Got to get that running game rolling. Got to get a running game going and uh, got to somehow contain Murray. Okay. Now, how we do that, how is that not a Jamal Adams a groin re-injury waiting to happen on a blitz package? You know what I'm saying? I think he'll I don't be know. okay. You know, we, we barely lost to him the first time we played him, and we didn't have Jamal in that game. That's so uh, Kyler's going to see a, a whole new uh, player chasing his ass down all, all game long. Uh, yeah. But we've never lost three in a row, and I don't see it happening this year. I think we're going to get in, we're going to get the job done, and we're going to get right back on track because uh, we take care of business Thursday. Then we got that mini buy. We get a nice little 10-day break. And then we take on the worst – what, is it the NFC East? Yeah, we're going after the NFC East. We're going to steamroll through do. those punks. Yeah, yeah. Those are all. Those are obviously all winnable games where the Seahawks will be favored in all those games. Uh, but what we have to also be aware of is there could be a potential hiccup in any of those games. The Giants are playing better right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay, they're only the second worst football team in New York, Jeff Young. <laughs> you know? I know. That's pathetic. <laughs> Uh, speaking of speaking of New York, but did you see where Jamal Adams was talking about how depressed he was when he was playing for the Jets? Right. Damn, Jeff Young, I can't understand it. You 0-9, you come home every Sunday afternoon beat physically, mentally, spiritually, psychologically. You have to read the New York Post where they are fat-mouthing you into oblivion. And then you go into the next week knowing once again you're not favored to win the game. And, and at the end of the year, they're cleaning house. And even his dad spoke out about it. Said it was killing his son, killing him. Oh, did, oh, did he say that? <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, and then, of course, in the same, you know, that when he was talking about that, he also said, <laughs> oh, man, he got so grateful that he's on a team that's got a winning culture that 
that winning is the only thing and that's all they talk about and that's what they strive for and it's infectious and it wears off on people and Jamal, he's going to go nuts, man. I tell you what, uh, we're just getting going. Halfway point, uh, a little more than halfway of the game of the season, I should say, but uh, I think we're in good shape. We'll get some pieces back and let's see what happens. And I like Jamal playing with a wounded wing, still playing like the warrior that he is. Oh, yeah. And uh, I like what the defense did in the second half against the Rams. I'm encouraged by that. Yeah. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, you know. Uh, Man after, props. Go ahead. After that game against the Rams, uh, the, one of the Rams wide receivers tested positive for COVID. So the Rams facility has been shut down this week. Once again, another, not only do the Seahawks lead the league in injuries, but the Seahawks are only the only NFL team that has not had a single COVID case. And um, so if we were handing out trophies for that, I guess we'd get one there, but uh, that's key. I think that's awesome that we haven't had a single I think COVID only case. two of the Seahawks players have tested positive for anything. And I believe that was Russell Wilson and Sierra's new fragrance. <laughs> Oh, man. So, you know, uh, okay, so we got uh, the Cardinals coming to town. Here's, a, here's the thing. This game would still be huge, but not quite as huge because, let's face it, Cardinals had no business winning that game the other last Sunday. But uh, Kyler Murray pulls out what they're calling the Hail Murray right here, this play. I'm, I'm telling you what, and, and Hopkins, what a receiver he is. Unbelievable. But I'm telling you what, they can, they can run that play another 100 times and they're not going to get that touchdown. Uh, they're yeah. calling it the play of the year. It was. It was the play of the year, the fluke of the year. Uh, it was everything, man. It was, you know what? And it surpassed DK Metcalf running down Buda Baker. Yeah, it okay. did. And, it uh, surpassed that play. And, you know, the Cardinals, uh, they've scraped by a few games. It's not like they're dominating teams. They could very no. well have two more losses on their uh, – on their stats right now. Um, so they lucked out, but their luck's going to end uh, when they come up here to the Emerald City. It's going to be raining, and um, and it's going to be quiet because we won't have any fans, just a bunch of soft well, cardboard cutouts. That's, you know, that's the other thing about this whole scenario as it unfolds in regards to who's going to get seated where in the NFC. Because if you think about it, with what the governor has implemented, we're not going to see fans, not only throughout the course of this season at the home games, we're not going to see any fans during the playoffs. Let's be realistic. If we host any playoff games at the clink, we're not going to see fans. No. We'll see essential workers only. And by the way, getting back to Hopkins for a minute, to paraphrase a Stephen A. Smithism, when I saw that catch that DeAndre Hopkins made, I said, as Stephen A. Smith said, that's exactly why O'Brien no longer has a job coaching the Houston Texans. <laughs> That's why right. Bill O'Brien is, is unemployed, okay? I know. Because when you trade – and as soon as he traded him to the Cardinals, and I said, wait a minute, you mean to tell me the same Cardinals that we have to face up against twice in the course of a season? I know how dangerous he was when he was with the Texans. Oh, yeah. How did he get traded, Jeff Young? Only Sean Kemp at the new weed shop can explain that to us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Telling you. So – um, Boneheaded play of the week, as much as it pains me to say this. Uh, <laughs> Russell Wilson gets the boneheaded play of the week for turning right around after we uh, got a takeaway and uh, throws that interception in the end zone. My God, look at all the green field in front of him. He could have possibly scored at least gained 15, 20 yards in a first down. Don't really know what he was thinking, but uh, let's hope that's the only time uh, Russell Wilson ever makes the boneheaded play of the week right here on lockdown sports that was um that was so un russell wilson and when you saw that real estate in front of him that he had where he could have gone there was one rams player okay and he could he could first of all easily pick up the first down we had time to go in the quarter we had a chance to tie this game going into half and to receive the second half kickoff we had everything clicking in our favor yeah we all really right? did um yeah, just it's just – and, you know, here's the thing. I'm going to give him a pass because he doesn't make those mistakes, and he has played at such a high level for so many years that I don't think we need to freak out. I think he just needs to, you know, push the perfume away, let Sierra market that, 
<laughs> get out of the kitchen. Let your kids work with your spatulas, for God's sakes. We still want you to cook, Russ, but it's time to follow the cookbook a little bit more closely. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? man. Yeah. Too, uh, too, too much ad living outside of the, uh, the cookbook menus. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Too much so ad living, which leads to, as we both know, big fires in the kitchen, which spread throughout the house. <laughs> At some point, we got a problem. Absolutely, we do. And uh, nobody seems to be carrying a fire extinguisher. So let's uh, keep the matches out of his hand. Let's go back to the game plan. Let's run the ball hard. Um, you know, uh, we haven't really had a lockdown sports show this uh, this season quite coming off two straight losses like this. So uh, while this might not be the most entertaining show we've done, it's going to be one of the shorter ones. <laughs> oh, no question. There's no question, because as we both know, the glass is always half full, but the water in that glass continues to excrementally decrease as I look in the glass. I'm going, I know this glass is half full, but there's just not as much water as there was yeah. when we were 5-0. and oh. You know not, what I'm saying? Yeah. Not, quite, just, as many, just, not quite as many highlights to gloat over this week, but uh, I will say... Uh, I think we're going to be in much better mood next week after we take care of business Thursday night. And I think to get us all jacked up for what, uh, what could be happening. Uh, let's just flash back as a couple of years back, Seahawks Cardinals prime time. And uh, who could ever forget beast quake 2.0. You remember this? Oh yes. Right? Let's have a look. Oh man. Oh, some ah, the glory days. Big time, man. Nobody like him, and uh, we need Chris Carson back. Uh, we've got to have that power running game. So, you know, let's get the fans jacked up. Watch Beast Quake 2.0. Uh, hit to the dispensary. Get all looped up for the game, man. It's going to be 5 o'clock. It's going to be rainy. It's going to be pitch black because it gets dark here now, about 4. Yeah. We're all light deprived. We all need vitamin D, but more than anything, we need a big vitamin V for victory Thursday night. Big time vitamin V. Let us have a vitamin V, which will settle everything down, Jeff Young, because as we both know, the mood of the city really kind of shifts with how the football team does. It does. Okay, let's be realistic here, man. When the Seahawks win, everybody is happy when you run into them, mask up or not. They're, right. You know, they're usually happy. But when you see people after we've lost and you say good morning, they're looking at you like, yeah, so what's good about it? You obviously didn't see the game. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, we're going to be watching Thursday, and then we're all going to be celebrating. My prediction, man, Seahawks 31, Cardinals 27. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. And, uh, by the way, defense. Let's pick up on what we did in the second half and let's handle this. Yeah, let's handle okay, we, it. We are so hoping for we're so hoping for something to happen for the sake, among other things, not only for the the football team and their fortunes, uh, but for the employment future of one Kendall and Junior. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no because, kidding. Because if they continue to crash and burn on the defensive side of the ball, and that's that was what really was a shame against the Rams is that the defense stepped up and made the stops and it was the offense that couldn't get going. You know what I mean? It's so true. And uh, once again, uh, just to wrap things up, man, uh, you know, the Seahawks are the only team in the NFL that hasn't had any COVID outbreaks. And I think one of the reasons for that is our defense has been doing a lot of social distancing. <laughs> That's got to end. <laughs> <laughs> Still moving, he's gonna go! Are you kidding me?